Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Friendly Academy. Now in this episode, I want to discuss about how do we whitelist IP addresses to your API gateway. Now in the previous episode, we discussed about different API gateway types like private API gateways and uh, edge optimized API gateways or regional API gateways, so on and so forth. We discussed their differences and how to pick the correct one to your use case. Now in this episode, let's say now you decided to go ahead with a regional or edge optimized API gateway. So since this is not private, people from internet can access it. They can access your API gateway over the internet. But in some cases, we wanted to whitelist certain IP addresses and allow only those IP addresses to access our API over the internet. Now let me give you a couple of examples. Say that you only wanted to uh, allow your users in the office network to access the API gateway. So your office network, it may have its own uh, public IP range. And let's say this has a CIDR block or the IP address range, uh, like so. This particular example CIDR, it's slash 28. That means it has 16 IP addresses and you want to whitelist only that. Now, another example would be, you may have another type of a CDN in between your API gateway and your users. For example, let's say there's a Akamai CDN, right? So we have Akamai CDN here, and then you only want to accept requests coming from uh, Akamai CDN to your API gateway. So you will make sure that all the traffic will go through Akamai and thereby all the security rules that you have applied here, CDN, like, you know, the performance uh, improvements, like caching and maybe content delivery configurations, all of these are applied properly for each and every request that is accessing your API gateway. Because someone can also skip Akamai and directly access your API gateway, right? Like uh, this. So they can directly access it and uh, skip your Akamai CDN. So in such a cases, those security configuration, cache improvements will not be applied at the Akamai end for those requests. So you want to stop this. So how do you do this? Now that's where IP whitelisting at API Gateway comes in handy. Now in this episode, I'm going to discuss about two ways that you can whitelist a particular IP or an IP range in your API Gateway. So let's discuss about those two approaches. Firstly, we can use WAF or Web Application Firewall. We can connect a Web Application Firewall to our API Gateway and then set up a WAF rule that will accept traffic from a given IP address or an IP address range. Now, this is the recommended way from AWS because once you have WAF, WAF and create a WAF ACL or access control list, you can create one or more rules to prevent internet vulnerabilities. And then you can attach the same WAF to your other resources as well. Say that you have another ALB application load balancer, you can connect the same WAF for that ALB. So it's like a firewall in front of your resources. But however, when you create a WAF ACL and create rules, there's a little bit of a charge. So we'll discuss that, but this is the most recommended way to whitelist IP address or IP address range. So what's the next approach? The next approach is to use a resource policy. So here we can set up a resource policy in the API gateway and then you can use the conditions in the resource policy or IAM policy. We can have a section for the condition and in that condition you can set do not accept any request unless these requests are originated from a given IP address or IP address range. That's the next approach. Now here you don't necessarily have additional fee, but unlike WEF, the changes are not reflecting immediately. For example, let's say now you whitelist a certain IP address or IP address range, and now you want to uh, whitelist another IP address. So if you include that in the resource policies, or it's not immediately allowing traffic from that request. It will take a minute or so. But in WEF, whenever you add a new IP address, 
and web will immediately allow that IP address to access your resource, in this case API Gateway. All right, now it's time for a demo. So let's do a quick demo about both of these approaches so it's crystal clear for you. All right, so right now I'm on AWS console. I will go to API Gateway and I'm gonna create a sample API so we can test this. So I will create a REST API build. Example API. Here I will choose a regional API and then create it. So it's created. I'm gonna deploy this. New stage, let me say prod, deploy. It's deployed and I will go to get pets and get this URL, paste it. I should see the pets. So I'm able to access this API over the internet. Now if I go and check my IP address, so this is my current IP address. I'm gonna copy this. And first I'll show you how to use resource policy to block certain IP addresses from accessing our API. So here in the API section, you can see in the left side resource policy. So go ahead and create a resource policy. And if you select this drop down, you can see this IP list or IP range deny list uh, template. So let's click on that. Now let's say I only want to allow accessing this API from my public IP address right now that I can see here. So instead of blocking it, I will only allow it. Now here in the resource policy, there are two statements, deny statement and the allow statement. So in the allow statement, we are allowing all the principal to execute the action, execute API invoke, API invoke action to all the resources. That means all the methods. So execute API, the stage name, let's use the wildcard here and all the methods get put, delete everything and all the path. So everyone is able to access it, but now I have a deny policy. So in the deny policy, I say, I will deny execute API invoke action for all of the APIs. I mean, this is up to you. You can either decide to deny access to certain path or like entire API. So I will use entire API for this entire API resource. And here we have the condition. So this is what I was talking about. So I'm gonna say condition IP address, and then I can define the IP address. If I want to block access to this API, then I can simply take this IP address and add here. Add it like this. It could be one or more IP address separated by commas, or you can even add CIDR blocks. So in this case, this is just single IP address, so it's slash 32. I'll remove this one. I hope you're familiar with CIDR blocks. If not, check my VPC crash course, where I go in deep about how to how to find these IP address ranges with side ranges and octets and all that. But for now, I only want to stop or block this particular IP address so I can use this. Now, what if I only want to allow this IP address or IP address range? So in this case, I can use not IP here, not IP address. That means if the IP address is not one of these IP addresses, then it will be denied. So in a way, it says whitelist this. That means if you define IP address or ad address ranges in this array, the requests coming from all those IP addresses are able to access this uh, API because it will not hit the deny, then it will hit the allow. Okay, so let's do that. That's whitelisting. So I'm going to go ahead and save changes. It's updated. Now in order to get this effect, I have to deploy it. You see, redeploy your API. So I'm going to go to resources. Deploy API and deploy. Okay, it's deployed. Now, like I mentioned, it will take a minute or two to take this effect. Right now, I should still be able to access it. Even like after five minutes or so, I should still be able to access it because I whitelist this particular IP address. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my VPN to change my IP address. So I'll use Japan here. Now I'm connected with Japan. And I will take another duplicate of this page. And let's say what's the IP address that I'm coming from. Refresh. There you go. I have a Japan IP address. So ideally, now if I refresh it, this should block it. There you go. It's now blocked. Anonymous user is not authorized to perform 
execute API, blah, 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 because of the explicit deny. Now that works. So what if I turn off my VPN? Turn it off. And now if I refresh my IP address, let's see what do I get here. It's the same one, two, three. 123 ending it 239 if I go to the previous tab it's the same one so let's refresh it now I'm able to access it so that's the first way guys you can use the API gateway resource policy like so now let's see how do we use WAF so here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this resource policy and save changes and then redeploy it So I'm going to WAF, WAF and Shield, open it in a new tab. Let's go ahead and create a new web ACL. So here my API gateway is a regional API. So I'm going to choose this one. There we go. Regional resources. Here in this section, associated AWS resources. So here it says add AWS resources. This is where we associate AWS resources with this WAF ACL that we are creating. Click here. You can see I can attach application load balancers, API gateway, app runners, app sync API, cognitive user pool, AWS verified access. By the way, I'll do a video about verified access uh, in a later day. But you can see one WAF can be associated with multiple resources. So I'm going to choose this one, API gateway, and now I have to find my resource. So let's see if I can use the API Gateway ID here. So this is my API Gateway ID. And paste it here. There you go. I can see my pet store. Add. Now I'll click Next. Now here I can add rules. Now here I'm going to click Add My Own Rule. And if you select this, you can see this IP set rule. Click this one. Whitelisted IPs. That's my rule. And this is the IP set. So I have to choose the IP set here. For you guys, it will not show up here because you have to create that IP set. How do we create it? You can go back here into WebACL or rather WAF and open it, let's say, in a new tab. And then you should see IP sets here. I already have created an IP set. You can just click IP set. And there you can keep adding the IP addresses. Let me delete these two IP addresses that I have already added. Delete. Those IP addresses are deleted now. I'm going to add an IP address. So the IP address that I want to whitelist is the current IP address. Let's see what it is. That's that Japan IP address because I'm still connected to my VPN. I will use this one. I'm going to whitelist that one and slash 32 add that IP address is added to this uh, IP set you can add one or more IP addresses now here when we are creating the web ACL in the other tab I will select that IP set source IP and what should I do if it is one of that source IP I'm gonna allow it okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the rule what about the default ACL action so now I allowed it. Any IP addresses that is coming in here is allowed. What's the default? For default, I'll set block. So any other request coming from other IP addresses will be blocked. Click next, click next, and next. And finally, I'm gonna create the web ACL. So the web ACL is created. That means if I come here and refresh it, I should still be able to access it. There you go. I'm still able to access it. But now, because right now my IP address is still the Japan IP address, I'm going to go ahead and stop my VPN. And now my IP address, let's see. So it's Sri Lankan IP address, I think. Yes, that's right. Colombo. And if I refresh now, what happens? There you go, it's this message forbidden. Now, what if I want to whitelist this IP address as well? I simply have to add this to my 
IP set. So let me copy this one. I'll go to my IP list or IP set rather here at the IP slash 32 add. Okay, so it's added. I don't have to redeploy my API or anything, right? Did you guys see? So I just attached the WAF and it immediately take effect. And now I added another IP address. Let's see now what will happen. Now I am able to see it. Now if I change it to another VPN, let's see Romania. And now if I search it, there you go. I get the forbidden error. I will stop my VPN and now my IP address should be back to the default one. I'm able to access it. Okay, so this is what I want to show you guys. I hope it's clear. I'll see you in another video. Thanks.